you know, within the parkour world, it's, you could say a brand like any other, right? Yeah. But outside of the parkour world, it's the parkour brand because its name is so powerful, right? So if your name's Samuel Thomas and you're like, hey, I want to, I don't know, find out some parkour stuff. You know where to go. You know the teams, the pros, the friends. You have the relationships. If you have no connections in the parkour world and you want some and you want to figure out what to do or where to train or what's right or what's wrong, what's up or what's down, then when you search online for parkour, you find parkour.com. And so to me, what I've realized for a long time is like parkour.com, whether people like it or not, will play a pivotal piece in parkour's future. Because at the end of the day, the website can say whatever you want about parkour and everybody outside the parkour world will believe it, right? So yeah. even if we said something ridiculous, like if we said, like this is going to sound awful, if we said Adam Dunlap is the founder of parkour, right? If that was the claim that parkour.com made, right? It's like, just kill me. It's the most blasphemous thing I could ever say. But let's say... Let's say I said that, right? <laughs> There'd be a lot of people that would believe it. Yeah. From outside the parkour world. So right? the next but nobody in the go ahead, what? The next generation would probably <laughs> be fighting with the older generation. <laughs> right. <laughs> They'd just be fighting like it's start a war, like who's the founder and like I don't know, with AI today, you could like take all David Bell's videos, you could like put my face over his videos and like you know, like like you'd have like all this Oh my gosh, it'd be, it'd be crazy, you know? I think parkour.com has a lot of power to sway public opinion about what parkour is. And that could be used in a nefarious way or in a selfish way. And my vision and my heart is that it's it's used in a way to represent the, the true community. Yeah. Understanding that not everyone's going to agree, but understanding that there's a, a power there and a connection and a brotherhood of some kind. And that should be represented. It should be some sort of, communal type universal ideology at, in some capacity. And what that means is if you get a rogue organization or a rogue country saying what parkour is and the parkour community doesn't agree with them, you know, fig is a great example. That's been of course on this debate for years, if something like that comes along, then what parkour.com will take a stand against it. Yeah. And then my hope is that as we continue to build our network and our, and our of community and our partners, then that'll help parkour propagate in the right direction because it won't be able to be captured, right? Like let's, we'll take Fig as the bad guy, even though I've heard recently that they're better than people think. And I'm kind of indifferent. It's a long, you know, it's a long nuanced discussion, but let's say they're like, no, we own parkour now internationally. We're going to put in the Olympics and we don't care what, you know, we have all the money and parkour can't do anything about it. Right. Then when parkour.com says, you know, we do not recognize fig and it's clearly on the website. Then when people come to the website to find out about parkour and they see, oh, wait a second, fig isn't fig isn't what we thought it was. Yeah. Then there's at least some semblance of a potential internet based counterbalance to some, some capture that has happened in some, at some level of the physical world. I think that's a powerful thing. That's invaluable. Like you, you literally can't buy that. I mean, you could with like a billion dollars, but like, you know, at some level, you can't buy the attention span of potentially every person on the planet to influence their view of parkour. And so people have asked me, like, would you sell parkour.com, blah, blah, blah. And we've had it evaluated like financially, what it's worth. My thought is like, I mean, I don't think there's enough money to get me to sell it because you're not, it's not like you're getting money. It's like, you're now opening the, the Pandora's box that parkour can be whatever the owner says it is, yeah, you know, yeah. and that's not a, a place that we want parkour to be. Yeah. And it sounds like you guys in, the, in England are, are fighting that a little bit in a way that the United States isn't fighting it. You're kind of fighting what is parkour and who controls it. Yeah. And so I have a lot of empathy and compassion for that fight without knowing you know much about it. I just know that that's a difficult place to be. And I, yeah, I have guys with you guys.